Hey guys, hi, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Steven. Um, I, a little general warning to those folks who are not employees of my airline and you're not a new uh, reserve flight attendant or someone going to training, this might not be for you. I do apologize. Uh, this is a video I probably should have filmed after Vlogmas, but um, since I was going to be bidding uh, for my schedule next month, I figured I would just film this video while I had the chance. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go over uh, Flicka, which is our website that we use, Flicka.net. Other airlines use the same website, I'm sure, but I'm not sure how it's structured or how it, how it works. Um, when we're in training, we're told how to handle every situation from a heart attack into how to how to serve a Coke. Um, but we're really not given any tools or any information as to how to handle uh, the website that we have to use every month to manage our lives. So this is just a little introduction to uh, Flicka uh, for you folks who do work for my company. And if you don't know who I work for, uh, we wear black and yellow uniforms. You can Google, you can Google that. Um, all right, so the screen you're looking at, just disregard the entire middle here that has nothing to do with anything. I don't even know why it's there. Um, these emails I've already read through um, different sources. Uh, we're going to look on the left-hand side right here, and my cursor is as big as I could make it. I do apologize. It's right there. Um, we're going to look right here, and this is monthly flight attendant bid, November, December, January. Bidding closes on uh, at noon on December 17th. So until then, I can go back and re-edit and resubmit my bids as often as I want to fine-tune my needs. All right. Below that, it says... Las Vegas, January 20, bid packet. Now, open the bid packet. It takes a moment for it to load because it's a lot of information. And inside, you're going to find a list of people who have to, re um, to renew their license, renew their passport, contact information for uh, the um, general administration of our company. You're going to see seniority lists. You're going to see uh, information regarding our hotels and our transportation companies absolutely everything oh who is going to be um, scheduled for recurrent training everything is in that bid packet so if you're new to my company and you're tempted to jump on facebook <laughs> to ask questions go before you do so go into flicka you will have access to that bid packet all month long uh and in in the in past bid packets too so before going ahead and asking questions that you're going to get all sorts of answers to, look at your bid packet first. You will find all sorts of stuff in there. Um, and a lot of stuff you won't understand, but but look in your bid packet first. Buddy bid, which I'm not going to do. We're going to go right down to submit bids. Uh, and that sounds really final, like you haven't even looked at bids. What do you mean submit bids? So I'm going to click on submit bids in just a moment. I'm going to hit pause first because um, the next screen we come to is going to have a lot of personal information from my coworkers, like their names and their numbers and their seniority spots and all that. And they probably wouldn't appreciate me showing it all to you. So I'm going to pause here. Great. All right. So off to the side where you can't see it, I see my employee number and I see that when I'm bidding, not my true seniority, but in terms of bidding, I'm 392 out of 633 and that's not too shabby for someone who's only been here for two and a half years um but let's see what you're looking at oh the, before you can even access really the what you're seeing on the page a big rectangle is going to pop up now i already did this i should have waited but um it's going to pop up and tell you that you have to go choose your additional bid options before you can continue now bid options follow the cursor off to the right hand side upper right hand corner see that little blue block that just pops up there click additional bid options you're going to have to go through these top three they're required uh the first one wave 24 7 to maintain in, uh, schedule integrity we are not allowed to work more than six days in a row we're not allowed to be scheduled more than six days in a row i apologize uh, unless we waive that necessity of the seventh day so if I say, yes, I want to waive my 24-7, that's saying that after six days, they can schedule me longer than six days, but within that schedule, one of those days has to be a 24-hour layover somewhere. 
uh, in order to maintain my legality for working. If I say no, then that means they're going to have to have me back in my base for 24 hours before, um, after uh, six days. So uh, I always say yes to waive it so that I can maximize the window of time that crew scheduling can use me if I want to fly a lot. Uh, so I'd say no. If I say not yes, if I say no, that means they're going to have to have me back at my base at the end of my sixth day in a row, uh, no matter what. Uh, and so I, I always say yes because I, I want to work. So I would hit apply if I had not already done this. I've already done this, so I'm going to hit cancel. Waiving your 33-7 is sort of the same thing in that do you, uh, do you waive your 33-7 in order to maintain schedule integrity? Uh, we're not allowed to be scheduled over 33 hours in the course of seven days unless we have said yes. Yes, I do allow crew scheduling to schedule me more than 33 hours because I want to work. If I say no, that means they can only schedule me less than 33 hours or less a week uh, in my schedule. You would hit apply. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already done this. Ready reserve. Now, if you don't know what ready reserve is, um, uh, you will. <laughs> uh, ready reserve. Let's see. If awarded a reserve line, and you will be for your first year or two, uh, do you want ready reserve assignments? There should be a question mark right here because the rest of it is not always important. Uh, do you want ready reserve assignments? Now, ready reserve means that you'll sit. It's an assignment. You're given credit for this, the hours you're at the airport. You uh, have to go to the airport, spend uh, five hours at the airport in the crew room or in the vicinity of there are gates. Uh, and if you're called, you have a minimum of 15 minutes to get to the gate, to the plane. Um, you may have more time, but uh, you have a minimum of 15 minutes. You have to be at the airport for five hours. We're given four hours credit towards our minimum or four hours credit to the hours that you'll be scheduled that month. Um, and that can you can talk more and more about that. That's that's a long topic. But um, I would say I would always say no because I don't want to sit ready reserve. If you say no, that means you're not requesting ready reserve assignments. That does not mean you're not going to get ready reserve. You will. Trust me. You'll get to know that crew room and your uh, fellow classmates really, really well while you sit around in the same crew room uh, all day. Um, but that does not mean that you you won't get them. It means you're not requesting them. Um, there's a whole structure as to who gets um, assigned trips when and all that stuff. But... Um, you'll notice it says exemption is limited and awarded by seniority. Uh, so if you are in the top 20% of reserves at base, you're exempt from sitting ready reserve, meaning you don't have to sit ready reserve. If you're in the top 20%, there'll be a list printed once a month that lets you know who is exempt from sitting ready. Uh, and if you're exempt because you are on the top 20% of the, the reserves on base, and crew scheduling calls you and says, hey, hi, Stephen, we have a, a ready reserve assignment for you. We'll ask you to sit ready reserve from 9 a.m. to blah, blah, blah. Um, and if you know for a fact that you are exempt, you can say, well, thank you for calling. I do appreciate it. But I am exempt from ready reserve. And they'll say, oh, hold on a moment. And they'll come back and they'll go, oh, you know, they'll say, you know, disregard our phone call or, hey, well, we found an assignment for you anyway, smarty pants. <laughs> um, and whether or not that's legal, I really don't, don't even know. But that is what this means. So I would always hit no um, unless you want to sit ready reserve. And if you do, you'll be sitting ready like 18 times a month. Uh, I would hit apply. I've already done this. So I'm going to hit cancel. Relief on somebody is we're not going to bother talking about right now. So, okay. Done. Now, let me clear this out because I've already been playing here earlier. I tried filming this and I messed something up. <laughs> so let me just clear this off again. So now you see uh, a page full of lines. Now, when you first do this for the first time, you're going to see probably five lines. And these lines are one, two, three. You can see that on the top. There's a little box that has a number that tells you the line number. And I have 11 lines. When you first start here, it's gonna have five lines, I think. You can click this little section here where it says page one of 28. 
click that, it's a link. It doesn't look like it, but it's a link. And you can uh, change how many lines show up on your page. Uh, I like 11 uh, because it fits completely in this little window here. <clears throat> so uh, that's a line. To put a line on your bid sheet, which is over here on the right, you would just simply click its gray number and you'll see that it shows up. And if I used, oh, I didn't talk about this. This is our navigation bar. So right up here, the middle thing is our refresh line, refresh line, uh, refresh button. If you click that, you'll refresh. You'll see that it's still added on my bid sheet, but it's grayed out here so that I know visually that that is something I've already bid for. So I don't have to keep on clicking it. If I delete by looking off to the right, click delete. Uh, a bar is going to come up here and say, do you really want to delete that? And don't ask again. I would always click that do not ask again bar. Uh, but you'll notice it's no longer grayed <clears throat> and it's been removed from my bid sheet. So you can go through and click on the number of the lines that you are requesting and they will show up on your bid packet, your bid sheet in the order that you prefer. So what I would do on reserve, since you're, there's no chance in God's green earth that you're going to get a line at, in almost any base in the first year, um, I would use the navigation bar up here to move through the lines until you get to reserve, uh, reserve trips. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, relief lines, we're not going to worry about. I'm going to use this little key here to move me forward. Reserve uh, notification period A is listed as R1. Reserve 1. R2 is reserve notification period B. And R is reserve notification C. Now we have three notification periods. A is listed as... Um, is midnight to 10 a.m. So crew scheduling can call you anytime from midnight to 10 a.m. Um, <laughs> Reserve notification B, the one that I always chose, is where they can call you anytime between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. And reserve notification C, they can call you anywhere from 2 p.m. to midnight. So those are the periods of time they can call you to assign you either a trip or a, a ready reserve assignment at the airport. Now, just because your reserve notification period is between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., as I always shows, that does not mean that they can only assign you a trip during that 10-hour period. They can assign you a trip at any point. So if I'm res reserve uh, B and they call me at 2 p.m. for a 3.30 p.m. show at the airport, that's legal because it's two and two hours and change from the time they called me. Uh, they could assign me a red eye that night. That would mean I would have plenty of time to take a nap and prepare for my trip. Uh, but a reserve notification period and the time that they assign you a trip for do not have to be the same. That's a, a big source of confusion for a lot of people. I personally always chose reserve notification B. Uh, and there were always fewer B's than there were A's or C's. So I'm going to move forward using my page forward button. And I'm going to go line, use one arrow back to find the beginning of twos. So R2 through here. So what I would do when I first started, I didn't, unless I had some just definite need to have one particular day off or a couple particular days off, like really big, strong, like huge things coming up, like a wedding or something like that. Um, I would personally, because I just didn't know what I was doing, um, I would just go through and select every um, notification period B. And as I click them, you saw that they added onto my reserve sheet in the order I clicked them in. All right. I can clear that by clicking clear bids. Yeah. Um, and so you can add, I added all of B and then I added all of C. 
just because I did not want reserve notification A. Some people said A and C fly more often. I disagree. I think they all fly about the same, whatever. But uh, so I would just go right across and select anything that was a reserve two, R2, R2, which is notification period B. If you want to step in there, and because there's not so many of them, if you want to say, gee, you know, I like, I'd like the days off here. I want to choose that one first. You can do that. It's a lot of work to do that line by line. So instead, look off to the upper right hand corner, upper left hand corner. See that blue box that says sort, click sort. Now again, with as a line holder, you have all of these things here to play with in terms of um, how to organize your lines. Uh, and there are two ways of seeing this box. There's a basic mode, which is useless <laughs> on reserve. And then there's an advanced mode. Click on advanced mode. The only power you have, the only control you have is to request specific days off. And that's right here under days. Click that. A little calendar uh, is going to show up on the left hand side. I'm not going to show you the whole calendar because right underneath it are people's names that don't want their information being shared, I'm sure. Uh, but um, so if I, for example, because you can see the calendar over here, for example, if I needed um, Friday the 3rd off, Friday the 3rd of January off uh, because I had a party to go to or someone's, you know, bat mitzvah or something that's going on, I could click the 3rd. If I have to travel for that, for example, I might choose the second, the day before, and the day after, just so I have enough time to travel where I'm going, do what I'm doing, and then come back for the, my next day of reserve. Then I'll click apply, which is right below it. This green just reminds me that I've got, I've asked for these days to be requested off. Now, if you look up here, you're gonna say, it says, see, it says hide lines that don't match click on that. So click apply. Apply one more time. Now remember up here at the top it said one of 28. Now it says one of nine. So all this, all the lines that show up now have those days off that I requested. I'm going to move forward to the lines that are reserve lines. And boy, there aren't many. There are just those groupings. Um, not, none of them are reserve Bs, uh, but there are three reserve Cs right here. They just say R. So I'm going to look at these three. They all have the days off I asked for, uh, but um, I'm going to, um, so I'm going to choose those. They all look, they're all virtually the same. They're all identical. So I'm going to choose those first. And then because my specific need is those days off, I don't really, that doesn't matter how much when they're gonna call me. So I'd also choose those. That's my first choice. Now that was only five lines of reserve. You don't wanna just bid five lines. I mean, God help you, unless you're super, super senior in our reserves. So in that case, what I would do is I would go back to sort, I would click here, see how it turns red? Click there and then pick the days. I'm gonna go back into the calendar and see where I had originally asked for the second, the third, the fourth off. I'm going to amend that and say, say if it's a local event, I don't need travel days so much. I just need the Friday off. I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna hit apply again. It still says hide lines that don't match. Apply and apply. Now, once again, the only day I needed off was Friday the 3rd. All the lines that show the days off, there's 13 pages of lines that have that, that one day off. I'm gonna use the navigation bar at the top. I'm gonna move through to reserves. And I'm gonna back up a little bit. Let's see, there's a lot. The ones I already bid for are gray. So that tells me I've already bid for them. 
And there's a lot of reserves from everything from here back this way is uh, a reserve line. So let's see. They're all oh, great. There are more R2s. So I'm going to move forward to where R2 starts over here so I, I can see as much as I can. So there's more R2s here. See that? And I'll just, because there's only a few of them, I'll look through and see which ones I think I prefer with the days off. And, you know, this one here, 253, gives me the third off, but at the beginning of four days off. So I'm going to go for that one next. And it, I just added it to my reserve, my, um, my uh, bid sheet. If I said, well, that's the best one of all of them. That's the best one. I'm going to delete it from my screen here. I'm going to remember it's 253. I'm going to delete it. And I want to move it up to my first choice, which is up here, right there. I would rather it be at my first choice, but there's already something in that spot. To move it down, go to one, click on one, and see that, that all those things are moved down one. Then I can go back to 253 and add it and it will show up as my number one. And later on, if I said, oh gee, look at R60. I really like that one too. I don't like it as much as 253, but I like it as maybe my second choice. So I'm gonna, it's 260. I'm gonna go over here, click two, move those things down and throw that 260 in there. So this is a way that you can sort of move things around you can delete things from here and then move them around. So if you want to sort of um, shuffle the lines around as you browse through them. So I would bid for everything I would ideally like, and then I would bid for things that weren't so ideal, uh, but things that I'd be willing to work. Uh, as an example of something else I want to show you, I'm going to go back to this sort button let me show you what I did. So I went right back up to the sort button. I'm gonna select all the selected days off it. See how it turns red? I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna go back to pick the days. And say for example, I'll go back to that first example where I wanted the second, the third, and the fourth off. I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna go down here to hit apply again and apply again. Once again, they're sorted so that I ideally have those three days off in a row. Notice up here where it says the little threes at the top of the columns. As I move through, I'm using my navigation bar again. As I move through it, see, see the, the threes stay, are the same. As I move through, oh, oh, I remember what my problem is. All right, wait, Urgh, back up, beep, scrap. Scrap that. All right, so let me go back and do this again. Sorry. Cancel. What I forgot to do was uncheck. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you uncheck that hide lines that don't match and apply and apply again, it's still back, it's back to a hundred, uh, back to 28 pages. So it's back to being completely all the lines that we had. Uh, I asked for those three days off. So all there's a three showing up because I requested three things, three days off in a row. If I use the navigation button to move forward, I'm gonna keep moving forward. See that pink line? If you can see, it says two because two of the three days that I requested off are off on this schedule. It, it's just that that pink line is a warning so that I don't select this line thinking all the days I've requested are off are there. So that's kind of an important thing to, if you're looking at the schedule as a full thing and you're not hiding lines. If I move forward, I'm gonna, uh, I thought, and see it says zero, like I'm working all those days. Uh, yeah, there you go. So that's a little um, heads up in terms of what I would do in terms of how to look at bidding for the first time as a line as a reserve flight attendant. Um, what would I? What's the last thing I would tell you? Um, I think I told you this earlier, but 
you can submit your bids as often as you want. Uh, click on there, email yourself that bid every time. And I change the title, the subject line of that email each time, letting me know which is really the final submission. Like when I write, when I submit my bids for the final time, the last time, I'm not just playing around. I type in something like final bid for January 2020, really, <laughs> or something, because I end up submitting my bids so often as I fine tune them uh, that I, I don't want to get, I don't want to mistake emails uh, for different ones. Uh, if you are going to be on the, the cusp of getting a line, if you think, you know, I've been on reserve, I'm only like five people away from getting a line from last month. Um, I would go up to, so say this is your full reserve, your uh, bid sheet. And I would personally bid for like 20, 30 lines, if not more, uh, just to play safe. Um, if you think that you're on the cusp of getting a line, but you don't have enough um, control to figure out which line you want, click on that one to give yourself a little space. And go up to the top and see it says any. Click any. And it adds the word any here. And that says you're willing to take any line. <laughs> and as a reserve flight attendant, to get a line, doesn't matter what it is. Just give it to me. I'll take it. And I'll be very, very happy. So what would happen here is you, if you were next in line for a line, a schedule, um, then you would be awarded that whatever line is next and available to you. Uh, you can also select re um, relief. I'm not a fan of relief lines personally, but um, that's a topic for maybe a different video. So if you're going to be on the cusp of getting a line, definitely choose any or start to explore how to bid for different lines and how you can sort of fine tune what you want for, for lines. Um, and in the future, when I may, maybe I'll do it next month, a, a video about bidding for lines. Um, I'll describe what a pairing is. The difference is between a pairing that starts with a seven, a nine, or a three, which are very different, uh, and then how to read a pairing possibly, but that'll be another video. So I'm going to clear this, yes, because uh, now that I've been doing this, I've been film I filmed this video probably three times now. Um, it's time for me to take a little, have a little tea, focus, and then um, start bidding for my line. Uh, for next month. Uh, if there's any questions I you have, if I haven't made something clear, um, if uh, you'd like me to expand upon something, expound upon something, certainly leave a comment in the section below and I'll try to either answer a question in the comment section or in a future video. And um, I think that was a good introduction. Um, yeah, certainly don't, um, let me know if I can be of any help and I will talk to you later. You fly safe. Bye.